Welcome to AQMD On The Air. I'm your host, Lior Alpern. Our guest today is an expert in electric transportation, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, advanced batteries, energy efficiency, mobile emissions, and truck stop electrification. He has held the position of Principal Development Engineer at the Hybrid Electric Vehicle Center of the University of California, Davis, and has worked in the field of advanced transportation since 1990, leading the development of several prototype advanced vehicles. Currently, he is a Director of Electric Transportation and Energy Storage at the Electric Power Research Institute, also known as EPRI, an independent nonprofit center for public interest energy and environmental collaborative research and is responsible for EPRI's research and development program for electric transportation. He oversees a number of partnerships and collaborations between EPRI and electric utilities, automotive companies, local, state, and federal agencies, national laboratories, and academic research institutions. Dr. Mark Duval, thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you. Could you provide for our audience a brief overview of your organization and what you do? Yes, the, the Electric Power Research Institute, or EPRI, is an independent nonprofit organization that conducts scientific research and development on uh, electricity and energy technologies. Uh, we've been working with the South Coast Air Quality Management District for a long time. The AQMD was an early pioneer in the plug-in hybrid and electric vehicle area. They funded a lot of very early seminal research in the area and have consistently funded development and demonstration projects to move uh, plug-in vehicle technology closer to market. And we've, uh, we've worked with them on several uh, occasions. They've uh, funded our projects. We've worked together on projects before. So we have a, a, long, a long and, and very uh, productive history together working on electric vehicle technology. Could you provide a brief overview of your vision for transportation in the coming years? We've been working on electric transportation for a long time, and that is because if you look at a future, a sustainable future for all energy um, that includes transportation, it's very difficult to imagine us getting decades from now without other sources other than petroleum. In fact, it, you can argue that you need other sources that are not petroleum that are sustainable or more diverse today. And right now, um, there are limited options, um, sustainable biomass, um, electricity, possibly hydrogen in the future. So while electric vehicles have been something that have sort of come and gone as the technology has developed, the overall vision of electric transportation that it would ultimately become necessary to have electric vehicles has not really changed. And so what we see that is different today is that the technology, and that includes battery technology, the technology around electric propulsion systems for cars, has advanced to the point where they really truly have become feasible, technologically feasible, and now it is a matter of m turning this emerging technology into a successful, mature, mainstream technology. So EPRI has been working with the South Coast Air Quality Management District on developing plug-in hybrid and electric vehicle technologies for over 10 years, and the AQMD was a very early pioneer uh, in funding and supporting research around plug-in vehicles. The auto manufacturers tried to deploy electric vehicles in the 1990s. GM had the EV1, Toyota the RAV4 EV, and Ford the Ranger EV, but these all disappeared. It now appears that the auto manufacturers are ramping up again to produce electric vehicles. What has changed since the previous attempt, and what would allow these new vehicles to be more successful the second time around? Well, one of the interesting things about electric vehicles in the 1990s is they had to develop almost every technology that you see today from scratch. So the first advanced batteries, which at the time were called nickel metal hydride batteries, and they're a very similar version of those batteries are in hybrids like the Toyota Prius and the Ford Escape and the Ford Fusion today, were developed from scratch for the first generation of electric vehicles. Motor technology, accessory technology, all of the things that are driven by a combustion engine like your air conditioner and your power steering and your power brakes all had to be electrified. And that took a long time. And you have, in general, you have a limited time window. And I sort of sometimes say it's around seven years. You have about this lucky seven years to make a new technology work in the transportation area before it loses momentum and something else replaces it. And if, as you've seen, we've gone through a cycle of technologies over the years, electric vehicles, fuel cells. And right now, electric vehicles appear to be poised to make significant inroads into the market. And I think that is because around uh, 
in, in the 90s when the last electric vehicles sort of rolled off the production line, and there were not many of them, you know, there were only a few thousand in California. I remember mentioning at the time, if we could just start over again today with everything that we've learned and put the same resources into it with the same interest, it would be successful. And with, I would say, a seven or eight year break, that is essentially what has happened. So we've, we've taken all the technology we've developed over the last 20 years and put it into a new generation of vehicles, and I think those vehicles are going to work extremely well. So a couple things are going to happen. One is batteries are getting more reliable and more durable with every uh, design evolution. So in a few years, we won't really be worried about how long the battery is going to last in an electric vehicle or in a plug-in hybrid vehicle or in an extended range electric vehicle like the Chevy Bolt. They will just last. The same thing happened with the Toyota Prius uh, over 10 years ago. People wondered how long the battery was going to last. The batteries were better than anyone had ever expected. And in fact, I think it even will surprise the manufacturers. But the main thing that will happen is that the costs will come down. There will be probably at least a 50% reduction in cost over the next 10 to 15 years in batteries. And so some people think that will mean electric vehicles will have longer and longer ranges, and that may be true. But at the end of the day, most of us drive 40 miles a day or less. And so I think what you'll see is the vehicles like the Chevy Volt or the Nissan Leaf that have a battery range that's designed around your everyday driving will become M more affordable to more people and you'll see more applications. You'll see minivans and, and pickup trucks and delivery trucks all with either electric vehicle technology or plug-in hybrid vehicle technology as the batteries become more affordable. And the other systems on the vehicle also have to become more affordable and I think you'll see that happen as well too. It will become simpler and less expensive and more diverse. So today if you drive less than say 40 miles a day um, you can just plug into any outlet in your, in your garage with, or with the, the, a little cord set that comes with your car and, and charge uh, it in about 8 to 10 hours. I have a Chevy Volt and that's how I charge it at home right now. Um, if you want to charge it faster, you have to get a permanently mounted appliance. And it's, you know, it's about the size of a, you know, it's about the size of a bread box and it bolts to your wall and it wires into a, a circuit very much like a, a clothes dryer circuit. So, these things are very reasonable and, and there's, there's plenty of electricity to power them. The cost of doing and installing these, these types of charge stations will go down. Public charging needs to evolve in a reasonable and effective way. So this means that you have chargers where you need them, like at your workplace, um, where you go shopping and do your errands. And then possibly very importantly, when you drive outside of a city, for example, an electric vehicle. If you're driving an electric vehicle around the city, a pure electric vehicle, so with only the battery power, most of the time in the city, you'll never need to stop and charge outside your home. But maybe you want to drive between two cities and they're kind of at the limit of your range. It'll make you feel a lot better if you know that there are charge stations along the way. You probably won't want to stop at them because you want to get where you're going as quickly as possible, but you can stop at them if you realize that you're not going to make it. And then for the plug-in hybrid vehicles, so the vehicles that combine a battery with a gasoline engine, they'll use this infrastructure to keep their batteries more charged so they don't burn gasoline as often. So they'll, they'll use more electricity and less gasoline, which provides an air quality and environmental benefit for the, a given number of vehicles. So if I, if I have a Chevrolet Volt and I can charge at work uh, and drive home, on electricity as well as drive to work on electricity and have essentially doubled the benefit of that one car while it's still being only one car. And that's where a lot of the air quality gains will happen. As you know, our region has notoriously poor air quality. How do electric vehicles help to reduce air pollution, particularly when a significant amount of our electrical power is still derived from burning fossil fuels? Okay, so if you're going to burn fossil fuels in a power plant and power an electric vehicle, that is cleaner than a gasoline vehicle, period. It's cleaner than a diesel vehicle, it's cleaner than a hybrid vehicle, both in CO2 emissions and in uh, criteria pollutants. So air quality improves. And you may, if you, even if you did have additional air quality, if you did, even if you did have ad additional criteria emissions at the power plant, they tend to be remote from population areas uh, on average, whereas vehicle emissions tend to be right at population areas. So in general, if you, we, we did a, a very large research project a few years ago with the Natural Resources Defense Council 
as our partner, as our study partner. And we studied the adoption of tens of millions of electric vehicles nationwide. And what we found is that emissions at the electric sector hardly increased at all to power all these electric vehicles, primarily because there were a few new plants built and they were, they were cleaner and tended to displace older plants, but also because in most envir the environmental requirements of the day really restricted the ability to make more emissions because you were generating more electricity. So you, you more or less got the electricity at, at very few additional emissions and you re reduced a lot of emissions at the vehicle level. You have at, in many different ways. So you have fewer tailpipe emissions, you have fewer uh, refueling emissions because you're not stopping to refuel as much. You have uh, not as many vehicles starting up and warming up uh, in the morning. You know, so I, uh, in my own case, I've driven a Chevy Volt about 2,000 miles, and the engines probably only come on about 20 times in that whole time. So all of the warming up and all the emissions that a gasoline engine produces, even the cleanest emission, cleanest engines produce right when they start up, are just eliminated because you're just not doing it most of the time. So very strong benefits, very strong air quality benefits. And if the technology, as it migrates to commercial vehicles, uh, trucks, uh, non-road vehicles like electric forklifts, these vehicles are much, much cleaner than their uh, combustion engine counterparts. So a new gasoline vehicle is pretty clean. You know, they've, they've done a good job in this state to drive emissions down. But uh, a lot of the non-road or off-road equipment, like forklifts, equipment in ports, short-haul trucks, these are still pretty highly polluting. If you can replace those with electric or plug-in hybrid vehicles, you can make very, very significant gains, and additional gains in air quality based off kind of the same technology. Before we close, could you share with us any additional benefits associated from electrifying transportation besides improving air quality? The, the two that I mentioned earlier, which were um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions is a clear benefit of going to electric transportation. Um, also, uh, a region like this, the South Coast Basin um, will receive an economic benefit for reducing its gasoline and diesel fuel consumption and increasing its electricity consumption. Electricity is cheaper, so households and businesses will have more income because they're saving money on energy costs and it is also lo locally produced. So while it is much less expensive, the money you do spend on electricity tends to stay in, in the local economy as opposed to being exported to uh, import, in, to import uh, gasoline and diesel fuels. Dr. Duvall, it's been a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you for joining us and for your leadership, passion, and commitment for cleaner air. Now, thank you very much. Well, that's our show. Thank you for watching AQMD on the air. Visit us at cleanairconnections.org to learn how you can help us clean the air that we breathe.